What is up everybody, Deck here, and today I'm going to be answering one of the most commonly asked questions that I see in the comments, which is, what's better, two small subs or one big sub? In order to answer this question, I'm going to be using some WinISD simulations. Uh, WinISD is a computer program which is good for designing enclosures, and I'm just going to be using the optimized boxes that it calculates by itself. I'm also going to be using subs in the same series, so they've got the same magnets, the same voice calls, and the same power handling, but they've just got different surface areas and stiffnesses and all that. And I'm going to be comparing equivalent surface areas, so two 8-inch subs have the same surface area as a single 12-inch sub. So here's a list of different drivers that I'm going to be having a look at, comparing two 8s to a 12, two 10s to a 15, two 12s to an 18, and even two 15s to a 21. One of the biggest factors on how a sub performs is what enclosure it's in. There's two ways of calculating the best enclosure. I've seen QTS used a bit, but the most commonly used one is EBP. So for speakers, EBP is less than 50. It's good for sealed. Around 50 to 100 can be used for either, and more than 100 ported. Now the way you calculate the EBP is you take the resonance frequency of the driver and you divide it by the QES. So something like 50 Hz over 0.5 is pretty common. So the subs I'm going to be comparing are two series of digital designs, a low end and a high end, and two series of sundown audio, a low end and a high end. So here you can see the entry red line series from digital designs and you can see something which is as the driver gets bigger from a 6 inch to a 12 inch the resonance frequency drops that indicates big subs are better at low frequencies than small subs also the EBP gets lower too which indicates big subs are better for sealed enclosures than small subs now the reason why that is is because small subs if they've got up to 1200 watts going into them unless they've got the port they're going to be reaching X max pretty quickly so they need port loading in order to produce their optimal output. Something else you'll notice is the VAS increases a lot as the driver surface area increases. And once again with the higher end 99 series from Digital Designs, you can see that similar story, EBP goes down, bigger subs are better for sealed boxes. And FS also decreases, but only by a bit, and it does go up here for some reason. Also, I'm not sure why the 18 inch and the 21 inch subs have such similar properties as you can see Quite a few of them are similar, except the QMS. I'm not sure why that is. But I'd say it's probably something that digital designers should have a look at. And on to Sundown. And we can see, once again, with the entry-level E8, still 500 watt sub, but kind of entry-level when it comes to Sundown. You can see that the resonance frequency drops as the driver area increases. You can also see the EBP decreases once again, and the VAS also increases by a lot. Now, I also highlighted sensitivity here because it kind of shows that bigger subs are more efficient. That's because they can just simply move more air per excursion. It requires four times the amount of energy to move twice as far, so it requires twice the amount of energy for a small sub to move the same amount of air as a big sub. And onto the NSV4 series, their high-end drivers. You can see similar story once again, FS goes down, VAS goes up by a lot, EBP goes down, sensitivity goes up, but by now we can definitely see that small drivers are better in ported boxes and big drivers are better in ported slash sealed boxes. Now this line right here indicates what EBP WinISD likes for sealed boxes over this side and ported boxes over here. And you can definitely see that most subs like to be ported, but you can see that the smaller subs in the series mainly lie around the top half of this and the larger subs in the series EBP mainly lie in the bottom half which showed that they perform better in larger or sealed boxes and now we can start to apply it in graphs so these are once again just optimized in WinISD I didn't change the volume of the box I just click next 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 and it calculates it by itself optimal damping it goes off and you can see for two DD508 drivers it likes a 26 litre box, 13 litres per driver, and for a single DD512, it likes a 50 litre box around. Now some things we'll notice is that this sealed box for the single 12 is twice the size of the ported box for two 8s. Now we'll also notice that the 8 is flatter, but then it's got a steeper roll-off. 
it's also got a peak at the port tuning frequency where it's a lot higher than the sealed 12 and other than that generally across the whole frequency range the two eights are louder than the single 12 in its sealed box but you can also see that the big 12 has a nice smooth roll off so it'd probably be better in a sound quality system people would prefer this in a sound quality system and on to 2DD 9915s versus 199.21. 72 litre box here, 141 litre box here. So we've got 36 litres per driver, which is really small for a 15, but it's what WinISD calculated. And once again, we can see that this one's ported and this one's sealed. And once again, the sealed one is twice the size of the ported one. We can see now that the 215s have, really do have a lead on the sealed 21 but the SEAL 21 performs much better in these very low frequencies down here. And on to the Sundown drivers. Now you can see that there's a bit more of a difference. 11 litres per 10 inch driver and then 136 litres for a single sealed 15 inch driver. You can also see right here that the tuning frequency of the 15 is a lot lower than the tuning frequency of the two 10s. And what can we see here? That they're both pretty flat across a lot of the spectrum. The two tens do have a bit of a lead on the 15, but once it gets to, you can see this 45 hertz right here, the single 15 starts to take over and it's got this huge lead down here. So overall, the single 15 is louder than the two tens. Even though the two tens have twice as much power, the single 15 is louder than it. You can also see here that the roll off point here is steeper, but they both kind of even out to that 24 dB per octave, but it is a much larger box. For that single 15 and onto the nsv4 now i'm now this one i'm a bit confused about because the suggested box for win isd for these drivers about 5.6 liters each for the 12 inch drivers which is really small but once again this just indicates what win isd considers its ideal box so rather than filling around I just left it at that for the comparison. Now it indicates too that the drive is quite stiff and I would, and they give you the option to select it with the black spider pack which is supposed to be softer, which is definitely what I would go for, for this driver. But right now, this one has the red spider pack and you can see that once again, we've got a five times box size difference. That single 18 has a way bigger box than those two 12s, has a lower tuning frequency, you can see it doesn't roll off quite as quickly. And other than that, they're both pretty flat across the top, pretty well even right here. But yeah, you can see that that 18 by itself really is doing quite a lot of work. So to conclude, the benefits of running a big sub in a sealed box compared to small subs in a ported box is you get a smoother roll off, higher sound quality, subjective, a lot of people like them though, better low frequency performance down in the 20 hertz region, and it's cheaper single driver less expensive but the disadvantage is you've got less power handling less linear output as in you can't fiddle with the frequency response curve quite as much to get it flatter it's also about twice the size and it's not as loud as those two smaller drivers in the ported box and now i'm going to be comparing the two small subs in the ported box with the single big sub in the ported box so it's more efficient, it's louder with the same amount of power. A higher output below the tuning of the small box, because below the tuning rolls off quickly, tuning the box deeper means that you get much more down low. Other than that, they do have a similar output, so they're about the same loudness, and also it's cheaper. Once again, single driver is cheaper than two. But the disadvantage is the single big sub requires a much bigger box. It's four plus times bigger. And also, once again, lower power handling. And in conclusion, two small subs are ideal when space is a premium. If you've just not got a lot of space, but you've got plenty of amplifier power, then two small subs is ideal. If the large sub in the series is ideal for a sealed box, then that's good for sound quality, smooth frequency response, roll off and all that, and a bit more right down low. And for the ported optimized large sub, it's good when you've got tons of space, you've maybe not got quite as much amplifier power but you really want low frequency rumbles you really want the very low frequencies to be boosted more than they get in a sealed box now something i didn't mention is if the two small subs are ideal for a sealed box then what you will get is a similar frequency response but the enclosure but the enclosure will be twice the size for the single large sub so it's a direct trade-off for efficiency and box size. So if you really want a small sub box, then you can get two small subs 
and just have a more powerful amplifier. But yeah, hopefully this helps you decide on what you're doing for your system. Or maybe you've just learnt something. Once again, don't just completely take my word for it. If you're really debating, then go into WinISD and make sure for yourself. This is just generally an idea of how it will perform, but there's always outliers and variables. And I did test with the same series subs, so if they're in different series, they can have very different results. But yeah, hit like if you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.